What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Twin Motion tutorial for you. So yesterday I put out a video on my SketchUp channel talking about how to create an interior rendering inside of Twin Motion. And one of the things I did in that video is I used a library can light or a light that I've created in order to add spotlights to my scene. And so I wanted to talk through how I did that and how I'm creating things to put into my object library inside of twin motion so that I have ready-made lights ready to bring in. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so we're going to start by going into SketchUp and uh, there's really three things you need to consider when creating a light object like this. Um, so if you remember what we're going to do is we're going to create some geometry then we're going to bring it into twin motion and we're going to use it or we're going to use the spotlight function and also the emitter material functions in order to make it look like a real light. And so what you need to consider when you're you're doing something like this is you need to consider the geometry itself, you need to consider the materials applied to that geometry, and you need to consider the actual light object inside of your rendering engine. And so what I'm going to do to make this very simple is we're going to start off and we're just going to draw a circle because all I really want to do is draw something that kind of simulates the effect of a recessed can light, so the lights that go up through the ceilings. So I'm just going to tap, tap the C key in order to draw a circle. And in this case, I think we can go ahead and we can type in a value of 48 um, and hit the enter key, which what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to draw a 48-sided circle, which will be smoother. And then I'm just going to single click, and I'm going to draw a circle with a radius of 3 inches. And so what that's going to do is that's going to give me a circle that's six inches in diameter. And so that's going to make up our six inch can light that we're going to create. You can see how this is six inches across. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the offset tool. So I'm just going to tap the F key and I'm just going to offset this in by single clicking. And we'll go ahead and offset this in maybe like a half inch or something like that. And when we offset that in, we now have a circle in here that's uh, we now have two circles in here. And so I'm gonna use the push-pull tool in order to thicken this a little bit. So I might thicken this by about a quarter inch. And then this object, I'm gonna push-pull up maybe like an eighth of an inch or something like that. So basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to get this material off of the wall, so um, or off of the ceiling, meaning I want to get this face away from the ceiling plane a little bit, because what you don't want to do is you don't want to bring this in and have your central plane here merge with the face of your ceiling, because you're going to get some Z-fighting, and it's just not going to work very well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this whole thing, and we're going to make a couple changes to it. So I'm going to start by double-clicking on this central circle, right-clicking, and making that a group. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to name that group something like light face. And then I'm going to triple click on this other geometry, right click on it, and I'm going to make that a group and I'm going to call this light edges. And then I'm going to take those two and select them and then make them a component. And so the component in this case is going to be six inch can light. So that's what I'm going to call this um, inside of uh, Twin Motion so that I can find it. So it's very easy to find six inch can light. And so now what we need to do is we need to apply some materials to this object. So um, remember that the way that we create a light inside of Twin Motion or most rendering programs is the object itself is more there as a geometry thing. The actual light is going to be cast by a spotlight object that we're going to create inside of Twin Motion. However, we need to have a material on the inside that we can set as an emitter so we get the look of the light actually glowing in addition to the light actually being cast by the spotlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to first of all go around the perimeter and just uh, triple click to select all of the object inside of the light edges and I'm going to add a material maybe the M00 material so um, just something other than the default material. And so then within Twin Motion, you can replace that material with whatever you want. And then for the other object, and this is pretty important, um, for the interior face, I want to apply a different material. So in this case, I'm going to use color M01. And so when we get inside Twin Motion, we'll set color M01 as the emitter so that this will actually glow. 
And so we could go ahead and take this object and we could import it into twin motion right now. Um, however, one of the things I don't like about that, and maybe I'll show you how to do that just so you can kind of see the issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm inside of my outliner. I'm gonna right click on this can light object. I'm just gonna do a save as, and I'm going to replace an object I have in here that's already called can light dash six inch. And so now, if we were to go over into twin motion to the scene I have set up, and so we can go down to the import function and click on import and go find our six inch can light. So I'll just double click on that. Within my options, I'll go ahead and set this up to keep my hierarchy fix my UV and my texture, and we'll leave the Z axis up and we'll click OK. And so that's gonna bring this object in over here. There we go. And so I'm just gonna click and drag it into my kitchen area. So there's a couple things about this that we're gonna need to fix. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to flip this or rotate it so I'm just gonna set this to rotate and we're just gonna rotate this I don't know why my numbers aren't coming up but there we go we're just gonna rotate this 180 degrees and we're gonna move it down just a little bit so that this face and so we'll just bring this down just a bit so that it's below our ceiling plane and so within this ceiling light what we would want to do is we would want to, under our lights section, we would want to bring a spotlight in and center that on this object. So my problem with this is it can be a little bit frustrating trying to get this centered on this object. So you can see how you can kind of drag this along the different, uh, you can drag this along the different axes, but I find it very difficult to like fine adjust this in order to get it centered on my object. So I'll move it there and it'll kind of look centered. And then if I move it up again, you'll just find that there's a lot of fine adjustment you have to do in here in order to keep this centered on your actual light. So what I like to do instead is I like to place a reference object inside of my SketchUp model. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete out this can light. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into SketchUp and we're gonna add a reference object in the center of this that we can then replace with the spotlight. So in order to do that, I'm gonna double click inside of this can light and I'm just gonna find the center of this object and I'm just gonna draw a little rectangle in here. So, and all this is, is this is a reference object that we're going to replace when we move this over into twin motion. So I'm gonna right click on this, we'll create a group and we'll just call this spotlight reference. And the one last thing I want to do with this object before I take this over into twin motion is I want to adjust the axes so that they're centered in the middle of the object. Because if they're not centered in the middle of the object, what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and click out of this and say yes. What's going to happen is then your spotlight's going to get brought in at the model axes, which are going to be over here. If I center this, then this will allow me to bring my spotlight in right on this center point. So I'm going to go ahead and click out of here. I'm going to right click on this object inside of my outliner and I'm going to do a save as. And by the way, the save as will only work if this is a component, not a group. So we're going to do a save as and I'm going to save over my six inch can light. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into twin motion and we're just going to do that whole thing again. So I'm just going to do an import. I'm going to find my file, which is going to be my six inch can light. Under options, we're going to keep our hierarchy and fix our UV and texture. We'll leave the Z axis up and click OK. So what that's going to do is that's going to bring this in and let's bring it over here and place it on this ceiling again. So we're just gonna move it over here and I think I need to flip it 180 degrees so the correct face is facing down. And you can tell what the right side, what the correct side is because this object needs to be, or this little rectangle needs to be hanging down below the ceiling. And so now what we have is we have a can light object with edges, a central face, and a spotlight reference. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna right click on that spotlight reference and I wanna actually replace that with a real spotlight. So I'm gonna right click on spotlight reference. I'm gonna click replace object. And you can see how this brings up my replace function. Well, now all I have to do is just drag a spotlight object in here 
and click on Start Replace. And so you can see how what that did is that replaced that reference object that I had in here with a spotlight object that's already centered on the middle of my spotlight. So instead of me having to mess around with like the lefts and the rights and all of that, you can see how this has already been placed and it's already set to go. And then you can come in here and you can adjust things like the brightness of your light. So you can see I can adjust this up and down. I can also adjust the angle that the light goes out and the attenuation, meaning how far the light travels. So you can set that all up however you want. And usually I try to keep my lumens in something realistic. So this might be something like 1600 or something like that. Maybe more depending on the light that you're um, creating. But now if we were to turn our time down, you can see and now I have this night scene and probably I need to go ahead and I need to make this a little bit brighter. Um, but you can see how one thing that's weird about this light is while the spotlight that's hanging down below it is casting light, the actual face of the light isn't actually emitting any light. And so what we want to do is we want to use our material picker to select this material. And if you remember, we set a different material on the perimeter than on the middle specifically so we could do this. So I'm just going to click on the center here and then in my settings, I'm going to turn the glow up to 100. And so what that means is now this material is going to glow as if it was a light. So you can see how what this is doing is now I have a can light in here that has a material that glows. And now I have a spotlight down below it that does the actual casting of the light. So now, and I'm going to go ahead and open up this angle a little bit, but now this can light object is a complete self-contained lighting object. So this is actually something that we're going to want to use in the future. And I'll go ahead and turn this back into daytime and um, for right now. But now this is all set up and ready to go. I've got it set up exactly the way that I like for it to be and everything like that. Well, now what I want to do is I want to take this object and I'm going to right click on it and I want to add to user library. And so what that means is that means I can add this in future renderings that I do. So this object, when I right click on it and click add to user library, that means it's now going to show up inside of your library under user library. So you can see how right here I've got my six inch can light. And so now you can drag this into your model anytime that you want. So in any future model or anything like that. And this is currently set up where I have to rotate it 180 degrees in order to have it for the um, set to the right orientation. So one other thing you might do when you're doing this is you may consider flipping this over inside of SketchUp so that the um, so that the light face is facing towards the up direction. That way when you bring this into twin motion and you save it, you won't have to flip it every time that you do this. But this is basically the process that you can follow anytime you want to create a library light object inside of twin motion. You just need your geometry, you need your emitter or your glow material, and you need your spotlight or your point light. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Are you creating libraries of lights for your models? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, Video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.